Grace and peace to you all. Welcome to worship here at St. Luke. My name is Brennan. I'm one of the pastors here of this community, and it is my privilege today, alongside all of us here at St. Luke, to say to you, may peace be with you. May peace be with you. May peace be with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. And what a gift it is to share in that warm welcome together here at the start of our service. Today we are continuing along in our Lenten theme of pruning and preparing. So as we do so, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us still away any distractions about us and join in our centering song, Be Still.
Please join me in the opening liturgy. O God of wisdom and grace, in this season of pruning and preparing, help us to discern between what we are called to let go and what we are called to embrace. Grant us the courage to confront that which harms and the maturity in faith to recognize when we simply cannot do it all. O Spirit of wisdom and grace, join in our pruning and our preparing as we look toward a new season of hope. Amen. Our scripture for today is from John 15, verses 1 through 4. I am the true vine, and the creator is the vine grower. The one who removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, the creator prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. It takes a whole village to raise a child, to grow in wisdom and to run wild. It takes a whole lifetime to share and see the love that unites us and sets us free. 
Well, good morning, friends, and especially good morning to our youngest, those youth and children watching. So I wanted to take it just a minute because the scriptures we're hearing today about pruning and this whole theme of pruning in Lent, it really came home for me um, today because we got someone out. You know, we have this new house and it's got some trees on it. And we had someone come out and tell us how they were doing. And I was sad to find out this tree back here, this tree, it's not doing so well. It's dead. Yeah, so we're going to have to take it out. Here you can see it's pretty clear. You see that? Right there. It's all coming out. It's going to have to come out. Because, um, you know, a dead tree, if we don't do anything about it, it's just going to fall over and hit our house, and that's no good. Um, but then I also found out that this other tree over here, that one, it's doing great, but it still needs to be pruned. We still have to cut off some of the branches. Even though some of those branches are still alive, we're going to have to cut them off so that it can have new growth. Uh, and that's kind of counterintuitive. I don't, I don't, it's not something that seems right to me, you know, to cut off the living branches. But when we do that, that tree will grow even bigger because it has more room to grow. And so as we do this, can we take a minute and pray? Holy God, thank you for the time when we can reflect, when we can think about our lives and where we are and what's in them and think about what needs to be cut away, what's not serving us, or what we could lose to have more space to grow to our true self. Help us to discern this and figure it out for ourselves. Amen. Well, amen. Amen, and I hope to see you soon. I can't wait to hear about all the new growth in your lives that you've had this last year, and I hope to see you very soon. Be well. Good morning again, everyone. You know, a few weeks back, we introduced the season of Lent as a time for pruning and preparing. We've considered some of those preparation dynamics here along the way in our first few weeks, but today is all about pruning. So let's get to it. Well, as someone who has found a lot of joy and meaning in environmental education, I will readily admit that this is a sermon that I have long wanted to pull together. You see, I truly believe that the important but often challenging work of pruning is a helpful teaching tool for those of us who are striving to follow in the way of Jesus or even simply trying to limit the harm and increase the good that we are doing in the world. Now, to cover our bases, a quick definition. Pruning is the art of cutting away dead, diseased, or unhelpful parts of a plant to either protect the plant or to promote its healthy growth. Now, I'm going to focus primarily on the latter part of that definition here, the promotion of healthy growth, but it is worth giving a moment's attention to the simpler act of cutting away that which is diseased or dying. And this part is rather straightforward. Removing damaged or diseased branches helps to keep plants healthy. When we prune away these decaying branches, we are effectively removing the elements of the plant that may in time harm the whole, halting the spread of disease while also making space for the living, 
healthy parts of the plants to grow and flourish. This is the easy part of the equation, something that many gardeners tend to every year over winter with trees or in the spring with some of our smaller perennial plants. We remove the dead, damaged, and diseased. On a spiritual or emotional level, there is good, straightforward advice here for us, even if it is often easier said than done. As we take stock of our lives this Lenten season, it is often helpful to recognize what is not life-giving in our midst, what is not helping with balance, with wellness, or with the type of seasonal flourishing that we should all get the chance to embrace and enjoy throughout life's many chapters. Sometimes we simply need to remove ourselves from harm. We need to remove ourselves from a harmful relationship or prune away a negative self story that has somehow become lodged in our minds or in our self image. Sometimes we need to remove a harmful way of seeing the world and its many people. That is, of course, easier said than done, but if we can recognize those things that are promoting harm in our world, in our minds, in our bodies, if we can recognize them, then perhaps we can find the courage to cut them away, to prune, to remove them, to make space for something else that is life-giving to blossom and grow. So take a moment to consider whether there is something of that nature, a harmful dynamic that you may be called to prune and let go of here in this season of your life. Now for many people, the season of Lent is traditionally a time to give something up. And there are many ways in which Pruning can be a form of giving something up or letting something go so that other good fruits can emerge. Pruning can be a helpful letting go. And yet, pruning can also be a helpful way to say yes. Pruning, in fact, can be understood as an intentional embrace of that which we are trying to grow. In our scripture reading, we heard how the divine not only removes those branches that are not bearing fruit, but prunes every branch that is bearing fruit in order to help it bear even more. This is pruning to promote growth a practice that is essential for many of our fruiting and flowering plants. Tomato growers will be well-versed, for instance, in the art of pinching and removing those little suckers that grow in our indeterminate tomato plants right at uh, at that that 90-degree angle there. While this is still technically an act of removal, I do like to think about this type of pruning as an act of embrace, an intentional choice of which branches or or stems or even seedlings we are going to embrace, to focus on for our growth. It is a, a pruning away of the excess or distraction that comes when one realizes which branches are most vital and ripe for production. When we do this type of pruning, we have the chance to give our deep yes to the vital main branches, even while trimming away the rest. In the life of a plant, this improves airflow and sunlight. It helps to guard against disease. And as the plant then channels its resources to those selected branches, they are better able to grow. The result is a healthier plant with earlier fruiting and the greatest chance to to realize fully matured 
ripened fruits in the end. Now enough with the, the metaphor and let's talk about what this means for us as the church. I would argue that this type of work, pruning away with the intention to promote growth, I would argue that this is very difficult for progressive faith circles. Places where we may find it really easy to point to the harmful things that we are trying to remove from the world, and yet far more difficult to embrace which commitments or causes that we are going to intentionally cultivate along the way. You see, it's, it's, it's easy to cut away dead or diseased branches. It becomes a real counterintuitive challenge when we are trying to prune away healthy living branches that are nevertheless competing with our intended route for growth. An easy parallel comes to mind here for those of us who may be on social media. Like many of you, I have a Facebook account, and uh, according to Facebook, I have well over a thousand friends. Now, I don't have a thousand friends. No one, in fact, can actively maintain a thousand friendships. Scientists suggest that one can maintain up to 100 to 150 or so stable social relationships. And of those 100 to 150, we can really only maintain about five or so deeply close relationships. Take a moment to think about your own personal relationships. Those stable, sturdy friendships and those few but precious, truly close relationships you may have shared at various seasons of your life. Deep relationships we know are vitally important for our spiritual and emotional wellness. They're also deeply important in the life of a church, both in and amongst our members and friends and and also beyond as we form partnerships of lasting solidarity. Every budding relationship is a good possibility for growth, and yet we cannot grow all things at all times. And sometimes we have to make space and intentionally cultivate those handful of deep relationships that will not only bless, but change us to our core. Now, if I were to try to maintain an active friendship with you know, a thousand different people, I probably wouldn't wind up being close to any of them. In the same way, if a, a fruit tree or a tomato plant tries to grow fruit on every single one of its possible branches, the result will almost always be a failed crop, as the nutrients become so spread out and diffused that the fruits never make it to fruition. That's where the counterintuitive discipline of pruning really shines. Pruning can be a removal or a letting go. But when we shift our gaze, it can also be an intentional way of saying yes, of being intentional, of channeling the wonderful resources of our time, our resources, our, our relationships, our energy toward those areas that are most life-giving or most life growing, perhaps to those areas to which we recognize we are uniquely called. There still involves a process of cutting away or letting go, but really all of our decisions do. And of course, sometimes that's hard and sometimes that's even sad. And it's in those moments when it can be particularly helpful to have a season like Lent, a time in which we focus 
on those most important things. A time where we strip away everything else, take stock, and discern not only what we're letting go of, but what are we deeply saying yes to as we follow in the wisdom of the Spirit of God. So yes, some folks give up something for Lent, and others choose to take something on. Some folks may approach pruning with a a focus on removal. Others may see pruning as an intentional yes to that which we are trying to grow. In both cases, it takes some time, it takes some intentionality, and it certainly takes some discernment. And then, of course, it takes the courage of rolling up our sleeves and getting to work. Amen. Hello, St. Luke. I have some announcements for you today. So coming up, as you may know, is Palm Sunday. And we're not going to be able to gather in person on Palm Sunday, and so we're going to miss out on one of my favorite things of the church year, which is waving palm leaves around and shouting our hosannas. Well, this year we're not going to totally miss out on that because on Thursday, March 25, that's about a week and a half, you are able to come out to the church, the front doors will be unlocked, and inside the front door will be palm leaves. You can come and just grab one for every member of your household. Please only one per person so that we can make sure that everyone who wants one gets one. But there will be palm leaves sitting there all day from like 9 to 4. And if you can't make it between 9 and 4 to pick up your palm leaves, please send me a message and let me know. Nora at stluke.mn And then I'll arrange with you to get your own. So we make sure everyone who wants a palm leaf to wave them around will get one. Um, And then the following week after Palm Sunday, of course, is Holy Week. And this year, we're going to be offering a Good Friday Zoom service. This is going to be a Taze-inspired prayer and meditation service where we reflect um, on the lessons of Good Friday, the hardships of our day, and we remember those that we've lost in this last year through COVID and other things. So I invite you to come join us on Good Friday for our Zoom prayer service, Taze service, whatever you want to call it. Um, More information will be coming on that in the upcoming emails, so make sure you're on our email list. You can always email office at stluke.mn if you are not receiving any emails and would like to. And let's see, on my that's all my list. That's all my announcements, so good to see you. Hope to see you soon. Be well. i mm-hmm.
Beloved, as we come now to our time of prayer, I invite you to find yourself in a prayerful stance. Whether that be sitting or standing or even laying down some way to focus your heart and mind to God. Let us be together now in the spirit of prayer. Holy and unshakable God, you who call us out from the darkness into the light to a time of reflection, we are so grateful, O oh God, for this time to reflect. Help us to reflect your light in the world and let go of that which dims our existence. We are reminded in this time, O oh God, of how short and precious and fragile life is. Help us to embrace the lessons learned in the last year, to go forward with a new life, a new life promised by Jesus, one full and rich, nourished by the vine of eternal life. Help us to connect to that holy source, O oh God, that we may live full lives for the rest of our days. We pray these things for ourselves and for our wider community. We hold Jean Clark in our hearts as she continues to recover we hold Larry Nichols in our hearts as he also continues to recover. Not only Larry, but his daughter Saskia, as they navigate together this hard time, as we all still mourn and miss their mother. And we say together, this is our prayer. We pray also for for Connie Bell, that she knows that she is loved and supported and cared for. Oh God, help us all to know that we are loved and we are cared for. Help us to reach out when we are in need and to know that we are not a burden on other people. Oh God, these lessons are hard for us to learn, but help us to hold them in our hearts, to know that it is a gift to help others. May we be that gift in this world. And we say together, this is our prayer. We pray these things to be helpers and gifts to others in this world, recognizing that at our southern border there are those who need help those who have been traumatized and turned away for so long, now seeing our country as a beacon of hope again, hope for their families. And yet, our helpers are overwhelmed, O oh God. Help those at our borders, especially those at Casa Alitas, a shelter on our southern border, who weeks ago had 20 immigrants they were caring for and are now over 270. Oh God, let us live up to the hopes that they have for us. 
and we say together, this is our prayer. This is our prayer, O God, as we try to imagine a life of relationships being born again. After a year of being distanced physically from people, as we begin to think about being close again as vaccines continue to roll out, help us to be patient with ourselves, patience with others, as we learn how to be in relationship again. Relationship and close physical contact. These things can be hard to navigate and help us and help those struggling with relationships and divorce, help them to find peace where they are. Peace and hope and joy, these promises are not just for those with partners, but for all. Help us to know that we are all beloved children who deserve hope and joy and love. And we say together, this is our prayer. And oh God, while we pray for these things, we also pray for those in our justice system today. As the trial for Derek Chauvin continues, we pray for the jurors being selected, that they may have a sense of justice in their hearts. We pray for the family of George Floyd, and all who have been affected by the continuing police brutalities and injustice of our system. Oh God, may your hope and joy and justice rain down on us like torrential rains, flooding the parched land with your hope and justice. And we say together, this is our prayer. O oh God, we pray these things with the one who came before us and taught us to pray, your beloved child, Jesus. We pray these things beginning, our loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let the 
And now, dear friends, as we close out this service of worship centered around the act and image of pruning, I offer now a well-known prayer, the Serenity Prayer, to serve as our benediction for this day. O oh God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change those things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So may God grant us wisdom, courage, and serenity as we go forth in peace together. Amen. Peace.